start. <laughs> yeah. That would be engine off. Lights off. Oh. I see them all. Yeah, baby. Yeah? <laughs> I tell you what, that's the first wiring harness I've ever built where everything works on the first go. Where's the horn? Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> oh, welcome back. This might be the last weekend we're really working on this boat. We'll have odds and ends after this. But Richard Day has come up with... Uh, Sayer, his uh, apprentice from, uh, that's cool, man. We have lost the deal of having apprentices. It's kind of like child labor, but I'm all for it. So we're losing all the sharp corners off the of stuff. Taking the odd and in parts. Your, your maid service here. Sometimes there's a difference in sound, like... That generally is the distance away you are. Okay. Cause so when you're real close, the wire is physically hitting the metal, right. and then getting a spark and then melting back. And when you're too far away, you're dropping your spark, so your wire's sticking out, getting close enough to arc, yeah. and then melting back, and then the arc breaks, uh, and, and then it so sticks out again. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right in the middle what should happen really is that the wire melts in midair before it gets to the metal and yeah. kind of just gets sprayed onto yeah, it yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. one of the goals for the day is to get this boat on that trailer Frankenstein together. We just gotta do the box back here. We'll be done. assembly on everything so the swim decks going on got a few more nut starts to put in on it and the cables as you can see what they do here's how they're clamped down to the back that uh, that one right there is a reverse gate and I'm kind of worried about it because it just seems a little flimsy for what it does on the uh, jet pump but we'll see we'll give it a test here so you can see our four engine mounts in the coolant reservoir the battery uh, location the air filter and it's all sealed up. That's watertight, guys, so that's not a big deal. It's glued in and bolted down hard, and when the housing's clamped on, it, it pinches the rubber seal around the air filter, so we won't get much water in there, not very quickly anyway. Steering is all in place and in good shape. You can see the way we did our studs to hold down the deck. It's just a bolt run through with a lock nut, so it's uh, only about as thick as the metal that comes down onto this. And then that wing nut will go over the top of this to hold it all down. And every bolt in there now has never seized on it. It just gives us a better chance of getting it out 
later on. Now we're still going to have to extend that uh, clean out because our water line I'm sure is going to be about four inches above the top of that. So if we opened it up while we're in the water, it basically floods the boat. So that we'll have to do something about, but we'll figure out where the water line is first. What we're doing is we're making a bracket for that uh, exhaust pipe there. Keep it from rattling around. Volkswagen originally had one there too. We know who's going to do the intercourse around here now. <laughs> That's it. Getting those splines aligned up between the uh, engine and the jet pump is often really hard to do. If you, if you can think of it, when you take them apart, don't turn the engine or the jet pump, and you'll have a much easier time getting them back together. Okay, lifting frame is going in for the fourth time. And somebody out there sent us some navigation lights, so we're going to have red and green. use this area underneath the deck for cargo and such so we put a conduit in down here to get the electrical wires up front it just pains me to see somebody so tall trying to get themselves in front of that boat <laughs> here we are okay. just go ahead and pull oh this. no oh no no you're on the wrong side oh no Oh, bloody hell. So there's Mr. Bill's shop down there. She's a rule mate. Uh, we came from um, Wholesale Marine, and I put a check valve in it. That's a one-way valve, so the water can pass through, but it can't pass back because I don't want all the water in that line coming back down and then making the automatic switch in the pump turn itself back on, push it. You know, see, that cycling is bad for them, I think, so I'm putting that check valve in. Now, it's actually not bad to take the uh, cover off to get the wiring in for those uh, nav lights. That's what Rich is putting back together. And for fuel lines, this Permatex is supposed to be the stuff to use rather than Teflon tape. I'm, I would be terribly paranoid if all I had was Teflon tape, but, you know, they might be right. I guess the idea of Teflon tape is you could do a really messy job and some of the tape tears off and gets sucked into the fuel pump. Yeah, you wouldn't want that. work of art. Go ahead and give it a shake. Give it a real shake. Get up there and give it some muscle. Yeah. yeah. Sturdy as can be. That's our, uh, you know, we've always broken those lights off we've been on the back of boats. This time we're not breaking that sucker off and it works as a great handle too. It'll come down there and even be a support for the exhaust when it comes through. Oh, that is pretty. <laughs> If you gave up on your first weld, yeah. Yeah. I think but maybe what makes it hard is if you do too much, you just burn through. Oh, yeah. you got to wait for it to cool down, especially on this lightweight stuff. But, I mean, it's not a big deal. Just weld here, weld here, weld there, weld there, weld there, and it'll cool down. Or a wet rag is what I do when I get impatient. Oh, that is so nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. I like that. <laughs> Surprisingly, it's easier now. Oh, just say hold. No, I said say hold, not fucking shit. When you're ready to no, I got a zap from the boat. <laughs> what I? Yeah, this needs to be cleaned. Ah, okay. Or don't touch it. scene of the crime. Yeah. I'll have to use steel. Alright, so let's... Can I get it to turn 
it all the way out. Kind of the red, big red. It'll do something. You may not like it, but it'll do something. Mm. Okay, a couple of comments on assembly here. The exhaust can go in after the lifting beam is in place, but it does share the uh, the second bolt there for the lifting beam, so the nut goes on after that. The uh, the clean out port extension has a direction to it. It has a lean, so when you put it in. It's got to go in like this with that loop going like that. That's actually the way the pump turns too. Um, so that can go in backwards. The uh, water hose coming off the pump, which is that uh, white PVC fitting down there, could actually be longer. And then the hose would come up outside of the steering arm, but there is room for it to clear inside the steering arm. So that'll, you could, and it would be easier if it came out and then came up like the original did. I didn't have stainless fittings though, so I went with PVC. Then we'll see if the fuel tank fits in here. All right, we know it fits over the steering cable, but I also want to run this water hose down to it. So what happens is the uh, the water comes off the jet pump. We're going to run it through an anti-siphon valve, you know, up through this line and then back down through the one that can take some heat. And it goes into our hose bar that we tapped into the end of the uh, stainless pipe there on the exhaust. Rich is done with our tripod back here and he's reassembling the boat. <laughs> Doing all right down there? I'm not ready for my close up yet. <laughs> okay, so yes, there is room for this water hose that feeds uh, raw water to the exhaust to come around that tank, so that's nice to see. Five feet of hose does it. Well, Earl, I saw another cat in here eating your food. I didn't think you had that kind of an appetite. We're just trimming that part of the exhaust down so it fits through that hole. I get it sparked. Really? Uh, that's, that's, pointed, that's, that's just propane. propane. Yeah, we're not settling costs too much money for us. Come on, you ought to know me by now. This is, propane's cheap. So you point it downwind and you turn it down so that the, the flame is up against the nozzles. Yeah. 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 You might, yeah, that's up. Now, with it like that, you just crack the oxygen. You up the propane, you up the oxygen, you just keep going back and forth. So you got a nice. Oh, you know what? But we need to. We didn't. We, we didn't do it. Yeah. So you turn the oxygen off. Fuck me. Oh, it does that. <laughs> you had it turned up some already. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. That's what's upset. Okay. Cool. Yeah, maybe it is an indicator, but I still. I, it needs to be hotter than that. I don't use soot, but I know from experience. But I think it's kind of cool. You can see the soot burn all the way back to here. Okay, I'm going to start bending it. I feel like it went a little bit. Yeah, yeah, see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, So this is our anti-siphon valve, homemade. This is just a, a check valve here. It's a swing gate check valve. And what happens is it only allows flow that direction. So water pumps in through this line. It can't go out that way because the gate will close. A little might dribble out. And then it pumps over to the exhaust uh, manifold and feeds the, the raw water there. Now when you shut the engine down, the pump stops working, of course. So this goes slack. And you don't want this to start siphoning water through. So what happens is this gate valve will swing open and let a little air through here. The water falls in both of these lines. It breaks the siphon. So, I mean, that to me is what boats should have in there. Brass. Yeah, it looks good. Do you want me to open this box? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
Yeah, open that box up. It's got our uh, light in it. You go ahead and mount that light. Oh. Stickers. <laughs> it's not the light. Oh, shoot. Stickers. Let me give it a little more slack. You know what? I could. I could go down around this thing, and that way it won't even rub against this R now. I'll do that because I'm worried about this touching it too much and wearing through right there. actually one of my favorite drill bits it's actually more of a rasp than a drill so if you can find one get one because they're really nice every once in a while in this case we're opening up two drill holes to make a slot Cool is when you go in the house and get caught up in other things and come back out and something like that's built. <laughs> Did pretty good. Really good. Four and a half will give us enough room, yeah. Okay, MIG welding eighth inch is a challenge. It takes some practice. See, that side was going beautiful, and then I got a little too much gap in the plates, but I went ahead and put some weld down anyway, so it'll make it easier to come back across and patch it. Now, tapping through an eighth inch plate is almost a waste of time. So what we did is we welded a, uh, a 3 8 inch chunk back in there, and that's what we tapped. Huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that <laughs> diameter pipe in a 90 degree, you know if you make the other one look that good? It's okay. We're not running water through it, it's a handle. Change. I think it would be sturdy. Cool. I, do, I think it looks great. Yeah, just guess where the other one should be. Fuck me! No! No! <laughs> All right, there's a good one. Right? <laughs> Our box for the gauges. Yes. <laughs> the wrong side. Wrong side.
Yeah, I'll just bring it straight on down from there if you want. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Another piece of pipe. And we just oh. use that piece as a sleeve. Because then they'll be the same outside diameter. Yeah, it would work. It'd just look a little too red deck. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be like me leaving these holes in this thing here. Okay? Just a little too red neck. That's the end of that day. We are getting very close to having nothing left to do. An electronic temperature gauge arrived, and that is to replace this one, which is a common one. It has a gas-filled tube between here, so it expands in the uh, um, sensor, and it compresses the gas, and it reads it on the gauge, but the tube isn't long enough for us, nor most likely any other boat so we've uh, replaced that one with an electric gauge and the all-around white light is here yes So we've got conduit down there in the corner for the wiring coming down from that light. It's going to save that wire. And he can cook too. Let's see. What do you call this? Spaghetti bolognese. Spaghetti bolognese. Okay. That's the air shut off and that's the air turned on. And so it'll ride like that. And that leaves the air open. If we turn it to the side, it closes the air off so that we kill the engine. It's also an anti-theft device. If you don't know to move this thing, you haven't uh, opened up the airflow to the engine. It'll keep rain, blowing rain from out of there too. Uh, that's not the idea. So the spray comes over the front. It's got to bring the fresh air up behind the steering wheel right there. So that's what that is. Now I just need to put a, some sort of a bolt to hold it in place so it can't be taken out easily or bouncing around. And this brace here completes uh, Rich's, uh, oh, we got an old shit handle, I guess, but wraps it up, protects you from falling into this, gives you a great place to grab and hold on to, and it is sturdy as can be. So I really like the way that came out. Another beautiful day. And one more day on this boat. I've been saying that for like the past three days. There's one more day. You know, but don't get discouraged when you get into projects like that. Enjoy your project. Have fun with it. You'll unwrap all kinds of little things that need to be done, which is what we're doing. But we're getting them done, and it feels good. So tomorrow, maybe the wiring will go in. Man, I just love this. You know, we just kind of decide, hey, let's put that in. Maybe we'll get sidetracked with some bench seats up here, too. There needs to be some other place to sit. It's mainly a stand-in boat. You know, you really, if it's rough, you don't want to be sitting down. You want to be standing up holding on to two things because then your knees can take the shock um, or you're a pussy and you get those really fancy chairs don't do that don't be a pussy look at that have you ever seen something so beautiful blue sky sunny day coming warmer weather
beautiful. better than the Metabo anyway. I just lost my die grinder, Metabo die grinder. I broke the shaft in it. Now these are gonna be a uh, toe point. So we put one here and one over there and then we can hook a bridle up and tow equipment behind. Those are just tie-offs, so you can release that and let it go down, and it will allow the water to flow it out. But if you're in nice, calm conditions, you don't need it, so you just keep it up. And I think the technical name for them are elephant trunks. It's all soldered together now. It's amazing how much wire goes with so few controls. Back from another $100 trip to Home Depot. Uh, Stocked up on solder, flux, brass fittings. That just doesn't seem right for $100. Jeez. Uh, that, that was 10 bucks there. Brass fittings, expensive, but they're so pretty. Now we're getting ready to do one of our live videos. If you like watching these, these are fun. This is a great way to get me to get instantaneous feedback on stuff and put ideas in. If you hate them, we, we make it obvious that it's a live video. It'll say live, so just don't watch it, all right? It's cool. Go on and go build something. But I can do this on Facebook, too. I put a thing on Facebook last night, like, how do you adapt this thing of a jig onto the engine? And it's like, you know, within minutes, I get answers from people... You know, that around the world it is a fantastic era we live in so you're thinking about building something think about building it with an online presence and and encourage people to give you ideas because you are not the smartest person in the room neither am i he might be he might be the smartest person but we live in a fantastic time so take advantage of it are you got a hole in my boat i'm cutting a hole in your boat oh my god with a big drill <laughs> Perfect. So this little gadget is an adapter to replace this little gadget, which is Volkswagen's water temperature sensor. So it will let me fit the off-the-shelf one into there, like so. Yeah. So there's our little water temperature sensor all in place. The moment of truth. Yeah, so the fuel on. Oh, the gauges came up. Sweet. Oh, this bolts. Nice. 12. Yeah, and the water moved too, so it's working. See, they, they just raised off 100. This would be start. <laughs> And this plastic stuff that goes around the wires is called loom if you want to buy it. It comes in various sizes. All right, table's getting cleaner. This is cleanup day. And Greg and Rich are just out here messing around. He's making a take-home gift. Hey, you're doing pretty good at that. Mm -hmm. Or Lindsay. Yeah. yeah. 
Nint oh, Rich and Lindsay. Oh, sweet. <laughs> You're so sweet. Mm -hmm. Lindsay, I really do appreciate having him for the last 10 days. He's been awesome. So thank you. Making gifts for home. Now we say goodbye to Rich. Oh man, I gotta get up at 4 a.m. to get through the airport. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be a long day tomorrow. So we say goodbye to Rich. He's headed back to England. London, London yeah. but we have the tender all done and ready for testing. So we'll be back to this project in June. See how she floats. Rich dug up a mound of earth for pumpkin seeds imported from England and even plumbed it into our overflow from the bathtub. SB Seeker, the home and garden edition.